Hi guys, Monica Lopez here, and today's nutrition session, we are talking everything to do with portion fix intermittent fasting. Now, let me guys give you a quick little background. Um, I've been following portion fix. I'm a like through and through portion fix girl for, oof, I think it came out like five or six years ago. And I remember when it came out and when I started to apply, it just changed the game for me. Before then we were trying to follow like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a dinosaur in this. So we were trying to follow like P90X or, or insanity, like meal plan that was like written in Chinese. It felt like, or, you know, Googling some good healthy meal plan. And I found myself eating every day, like chicken breast and broccoli and fish and just not like not knowing like the abundance of, of ways to eat healthy and not have to be eating the same things and portion fix just changed everything for me. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I opened up that first book and I saw the list of foods that were, were possible, I'm like, oh my gosh, like there's so much variety. It changed everything for me when it came to nutrition. Um, I can also tell you that I've been doing home fitness programs with Beachbody for over 10 years now, over 10 years. And what I've learned is that nutrition plays, forget a vital role. It is like almost the most important role. I know that I truly believe it's an equal playing field with, you know, having to push play to workouts. You got to put in the work, you got to sweat, you got to like struggle, you know, in, in your home gym and get those workouts in because it's necessary, right? It's part of the formula. I believe in Shakeology. I mean, it's not in my cup right now. I'm drinking my H2O. I'm so proud of myself. I've been doing so good with my water, by the way. Um, but I drink my Shakeology once a day, no matter what. And there's some days that I'll take, I'll drink two a day, especially like if I feel a little, a little weakened in the immune, you know, like my immune system, I will, I'll drink a double one um, for the day. Like I believe in that stuff wholeheartedly. And let me tell you, I was that person that it took my coach almost seven months to get me to try Shakeology because I'm like, I like to eat my food, thank you very much. I don't need a protein shake, I'm good, thank you very much. But I just didn't understand what Shakeology was until I gave it a shot and here I am, all these years later, um, a complete lifer. So I drink my Shakeology, but then the last component to that is nutrition. And I would say out of the three things, nutrition's always been my hardest thing to maintain right? I will work out every single day. I have no problem getting the workout in. In fact, I think it's my mental sanity. It's for my mental sanity. Um, I, I will drink my shake because that's the easiest part of the day. To me today, by the way, if you're a Shakeology drinker um, or you're just starting and you're like, it's okay, um, but I'm not loving it. It's not like what I'm about to say. I'm about to say to me, it's like dessert every day. In fact, talking about my meal plan here, it's my dessert. I love that stuff. But I remember at first, I, did, I just, I didn't love it. I was like, okay, I'm like, I can get it down, but I knew that it was healthy for me. I knew it was gonna help me on my journey because my coach kept telling me like, this is the missing key to, to your success. And with that, knowing that, that was the discipline that then I didn't realize, I didn't realize one key thing that Shakeology does drinking every single day is that it gets your palate to adapt to the superfoods, to the good stuff. So then all of a sudden when you are eating the broccoli, you are eating the asparagus and the and the things like that you used to hate or you didn't like, whatever, your body's adapted to it, your palate's adapted to it, and all of a sudden it's it's a wonder, like it's you're you're craving it. I don't know if anybody's here done the ultimate reset, that 21 day detox. Man, when you're when you detox your body like that and you go to eat fruit, it literally is like eating a Skittle. Like it is so good. But that's the palate. That's the palate that's being trained to understand that. Oh my gosh, sorry guys. I'm getting like phone calls, texts, like all the things are coming in right now at 4 p.m. What is happening? Okay, so with that being said, um, nutrition's always been the hardest for me because here's another thing about me. Your girl likes her cocktails. She likes her cocktails! And your girl's favorite thing to do on the weekends is like not cook and go out to eat. My family and I, we love to go out to eat and try new restaurants. I live in Miami, there's so much happening. Like that is my jam. When I go to, with my friends and we do date nights or we go to the Keys or whatever, like it's like, what restaurant can we try now? Like that is my lifestyle. That is what I work so hard for. I like that. And so I also know that about myself. So sometimes in that department, I may sway a little bit and that's the harder part for me. Um, but all I have to say is that portion fix has always worked well for me. It's always been the thing that I could go back to and I can use track, like knowing what to eat and how much to eat 
it served me so, so well. And I've kept my results for the most part. I, you know, kind of, oh, nobody's perfect, right? It kind of goes like this, but I've never completely lost control, right? And while I've been in a place where I've been like in my tip top shape, that also wasn't sustainable either. I was probably doing that for a reason. Like I had a personal reason why I wanted to get into top shape, or if maybe I was in a test group to prove what a program can do and following the meal plan to a T, like I've done those things. I've done that work before. With all that, I will say this. I always felt like I was following it, but the one comp component that was never organic to me that I was actually forcefully making myself do was the timing of the foods, right? I did time nutrition and I felt like I was forcing myself to eat, like wake up and eat before workout. It's not organically what my body likes, okay? It's just not. However, I can tell you, every body is different. Every body is different because like my two homegirls, Christina and Autumn, like if they wake up and if they don't get food like now, they're cranky. I'm not like that. The thought of food makes me want to gag in the morning. I'm like, Ugh, can I just have a cup of coffee? Hold on, guys. My husband is driving this. Babe, I'm on a phone call. I got to call you back. Yeah, you yes, bye. Um, so th that I always knew, like I was kind of forcing myself to do it because I knew that it was part of the plan. It was what I needed to do. Right. Um, the other thing is like late night eating, you know, I knew that I had to get that under control too. So going into intermittent fasting, when it came out, when it came out, I said to myself, all right, the pros, not being a morning eater was a pro for me. I was like super excited about that because I know that I don't. I don't organically want to eat in the morning. Um, fasted workouts. They have been my jam for years upon years now. I wake up in the morning and I like to first thing in the morning, first I chug water because water is important. You want the water to be the first thing always that hits your body. But the second thing after that was then getting in my energizing, getting my workout in. I freaking love it, right? I've got friends who if they don't have food in their body before workout, they will gas out and they cannot finish. So their body is different but I knew that mine was different in this component. In fact, when I was forced to eat before, I would just drink Shakeology because I just really did not want food in my body because it just didn't operate the same way for me. Now the con, I will say, like I told you a minute ago, I struggle, I struggle with right before bed, I'm the girl that also grabs two Oreos and runs upstairs and eats them on the way up. I'm the girl that if I'm having a bad day, I want a giant bowl of Fruit Loops right before bed. Like I crave it. Right? I'm the girl that after every meal, I, I swear I was conditioned to this like since baby food because I did it to my own kids, not even realizing it. Like, did anybody else like feed your kid like, you know, whatever, the green beans or whatever, the, the whatever food, the baby food, and then you stopped and you're like, okay, now time for your dessert, bananas. Like, I have to have food and then have to, like have to have something to kill the, des like, the dessert craving. I'm like, it's made that way. Like, again, I'm thinking of my same good friends. We go to restaurants and when they bring dessert, they're like, no, thank you. I'm like, um, yes, please. Like now I need a dessert now. Or I'm going to be like, like, I don't know. It's a thing for me. So I knew a con for me was a late night eating and that, uh, that desire of something sweet. But then here's another pro that came out of this now that I've, I committed to this. And by the way, here's another thing I should say. I'm only 11 days in to intermittent fasting. But the reason why I know I know like this is it for me. This is my jam. Like I know it's because I've done everything else and I can compare it and I was able to adapt like this and understand what I could do with this and how well it fit into my lifestyle. So right away committing the pro that I figured out by knowing that my struggle was going to be that nighttime. That was the one thing I was scared of is that it forced me to then say to myself early bedtime. And by early, I mean 930 I'm in bed. Like that's honestly, in Monica's world, and you could talk to all my friends, I love the, the lifestyle of partying it out all day. I love going boating. I love all day with the kids and doing stuff and traveling and da da da. But I like to be in bed by nine. I like to cuddle on the couch, watch a movie and fall asleep. My jam is not late nights at a bar or a night. That's just not my jam anymore. So I know my lifestyle. So I also knew that getting a bedtime back at 9.30 and waking up for my no snooze crew workouts, my 6.30 a.m. workouts, 
this is where I thrive. And with, with knowing what my biggest struggle in this whole thing was going to be, which was late night eating, it ended up being like the biggest pro because now I have solidified this, this routine, this schedule that serves me with my morning routine and getting to bed early and not screwing it all up, like all the hard work I've done. So this is what I've discovered in the last 11 days and I wanna share with you guys. Now, for those of you who have asked me, so these are the questions I keep getting on repeat, 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 every time I mention intermittent fasting. Am I doing 12-12 or am I doing 16-8? Those are the two paths that you could take, right? It's 12 hours on, 12 hours off, or 16 hours you know, on fasting, eight hours off. My humble opinion, 12-12, I don't think it's gonna be very effective. For that, you just might as well do foundational fix, like it's the same shit. But if the 16-8, that's where the money's at. Now, at first, I thought 16-8 was gonna be impossible for me. Uh, that, for me, my eating schedule that I have learned works is from starting at 11 a.m. and I finish my, my window at 7 p.m., okay? That's what I started with. And I was afraid of it, thinking it, like that was not gonna work for me, but it's actually working beautifully. If you test this out and it's very, very, very hard for you, then what I would say is start like, do it maybe two or three days where you start taking a, an hour away, you know? So maybe you start at, if, if it's just so hard for you, you know, 9.30 and then cut it to 10, and then from 10, to cut it to 10.30, and then from 10.30, like incrementally get to that 16.8. Um, that's what I would say. Um, I also think that, like I said, it, this may not, intermittent fast, fasting may not be for you. For me, it checked so many boxes that I knew it was for me. Um, but I also have heard from women out there that they say if you're struggling, like if you're at that age and I'm getting there, I'm almost 40 and I'm already starting to see a lot of changes in my body, uh, you know, down to like even going to the doctor and him like flat out telling me like you're getting there, things are going to shift up on you a bit. My hormones and you guys say like the act, like all these things that started like popping up. If you're going through that, they say intermittent fasting is a good thing to do to kind of pre press a reset button. So if that's you too, and you're maybe saying this doesn't check all the boxes for me, but you need a change, I would say stick it out. Stick it out, do the sacrifice of, you know, incrementally building to there and try it because because it could be your answer. And it doesn't mean that intermittent fasting, that's another thing I've learned about it. It's a style of eating. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be long-term, like an all or nothing. You could decide to do it right after coming back from vacation because you wanna get back, you know, into, into, you know, come back, like bring yourself back. And it's a quick way to bring yourself back. And then once you've got it, you can switch back to foundational or switch back to 2B mindset or switch back to whatever it is that organically works for you, where you know your body operates well on, okay? So just a little couple things that I've learned along the way. But for me, I am doing the 16-8. And like I said, I started at 11 a.m. And my, I don't eat past 7 p.m. at all whatsoever. Like nothing. Just water. Okay? 11 a.m., I usually break my fast. I'll say my next meal after that is around 2.30. Okay? So right before, like I was doing stuff right now. And I actually got my meal in around almost 3 o'clock. I was a little pushing a little bit because I've been so busy today. Um, and then my next meal after that, I could probably hold off until about 5.30 or 6 p.m. I'm learning. And then from there, right after I have that 5.30 or 6 p.m. meal, I'm then following it up with Shakeology as my dessert, because I told you guys I have to have something sweet, and that's ending my day. Now the breakdown of my, my containers is another big question I've gotten. If I do my calculations, it leaves me in bracket A, right? Eating out of plan A. But again, I know myself. I've been doing this for far too long, using Portion Fix for far too long that I know if I try to like, put myself in the box of plan A and only two carbs a day, I'm gonna screw it up. I bump myself up to B. It gives me more veggies, which I absolutely love veggies. It gives me more carbs. Some days I use the carbs and some days I don't, but I'm not gonna sit there and tell myself I'm a failure because I have more carbs when I know like, my body thrives on it, just gotta eat the right ones, right? It doesn't mean I'm eating like a damn Pop-Tart, it means I'm having, you know, brown rice, I'm having, you know, sweet potato, like I'm having the good stuff. That's good for me, that's giving me the energy that I need. Like I listen to my body and I know that I'm not here, you know, to, to starve myself, that's not the point, that's not sustainable. Um, the other thing is, is your homegirl likes her wine and she wants to have the yellow as a wine sometimes. So I'm going, to like give myself the yellow and not freak out, right? I do all the rest of the work. So I've been 
I would say I'm teetering between A and B all the time um, and how I do that. Um, now, I will say that if you want the breakdown of, of containers, I, under portion fix, when you go to intermittent fasting, Autumn put out sample plans. It's there. Like I literally started with what she was doing, the way she broke it down, and then I just kind of moved things around. Um, I will say that it's imperative. Even if you think you've got portion fix down, track it. I've been using the Nutrition Plus and every meal I'm in there tracking the colors because sometimes you forget. You're like, oh wait, that's right. I did put this in my mouth. You're like, that sounds funny. But I did eat the whatever, you know, I did grab those, that extra tangerine. Like I forgot about that, you know? So track it, track it. If you really want change, you've got to track it. Just like your workouts, if you really want change and you want to beat what you're doing, you need to know, you got to remember what you did the day before, the day before that, and the day before that. So that app has been like amazing and I've been also tracking my water because I want to, I just want to get better at these things, right? I know it's good for my body. Now, I will talk about um, real quick because this is another big, big question that I've gotten is my recover. So recover essentially will break your fast, okay? So if you want to continue to use recover, the best possible way to do it is you've got to time your workout to where you finish your workout and you go straight into recover ready to break your fast. That's not me. I wake up at 6.30 in the morning. By the time I take my energy, like get dressed, take my energize. I'm pushing play, I'm pushing play about seven, finish my workout by eight. I'm not breaking my fast till 11. For me, recover, I've had to eliminate. It's a choice I've made. It's a choice I've made. At the same time, I also know that right now in my workouts, I'm doing 6.45. You guys know, I, for those that don't know, I was dealing with a rehab of a shoulder from something stupid that I did. And I couldn't lift heavy anyway. I couldn't even carry heavy weights. So even if I was doing lower body, it's not like I could grab the 25s or 30s even if I wanted to. And a lot of times the recovery is gonna help you repair those muscles faster so that it doesn't, it doesn't hold you back the next day in your workouts. Well, in my case, I wasn't even like getting to that place of shredding muscle that bad that the recovery was necessary. So for me, I have eliminated it. It's just what it is. I know that if I wanna bring it back, that means I'm going to have to shift the time of my workout or the timing of my fast. And that's just a decision, a personal decision for each person to make. Um, energize, that's been another big one. Um, you'll, if you sit there and you go to all the blogs and you go to all the things about intermittent fasting, some people will say anything with calories breaks your fast. Some will say as long as it's under 50 calories, it's okay. Um, some will say that hundred milligrams of caffeine is tops that you can have or that you should have to keep the fasting like healthy and whatnot. I've decided a long time ago, I trust Autumn Calibris. So what she says is what I'm going by, right? And there's others that are saying like, oh yeah, I do drink whatever, my pre-workout, it does have calories. And they, they titled it dirty fasting, but it still is doing the fasting process, right? So that's what I have gone with. Autumn says, don't pass 100 milligrams of caffeine. If you look at your Energize, it's 20 calories. And one scoop is 100 milligrams of caffeine. And so that's exactly what I've been doing. I have been doing just one scoop. I used to be two scoopers sometimes, two and a half, three. But I have brought myself down to one scoop and one scoop it is. And that's how I'm been getting my workouts done for the last 11 days. And I'm doing it, I'm thriving. Okay, so the other thing about the fasting period that you should understand, and I'll go into my next question here that I've been getting a lot, is that when you're in that fasting, that's when the muscle is being, I mean, I'm sorry, not the muscle, not the muscle the fat is being burnt, right? Like that's why they say this is a great way to eat, to, to kick your metabolism, to get into those hard areas of like belly fat. I know for guys, like I'm, in, I'm insanely inspired by this because I haven't lifted real weights in my arms in almost two months. Like I've been playing around with twos and fives and that just started like a week ago. And yet my arms are shredding, obviously existing muscle because I've worked out for so long, but the fat is being burnt away. Like I, my body is doing something that I have not seen in a very, very long time without having to be in tip top shape with what I'm eating. And so for me, this is like, I want to cry. I'm so happy, right? I want to cry that I'm so happy. Um, but understand that that's what the fasting period has done. That's why you're going on this. You're deciding to do this, this process to your body because it's, it's, 
attacking the fat that is on your body and burning it off. That's what the fasting period does. Um, so that takes me to my next topic is like the weekend. The weekend was the first time where I start to have to play around a little bit with my fasting schedule. Here's why. Because your homegirl also here wants long-term sustainability in this. I am not doing a sh quick fix here. I mean, 10 years strong already in what I'm doing, but I'm trying to figure out how to like bridge, bridge the gap a little bit more between having to like restart things or, or rebuckle down. Like I'm just trying to figure out how to get to a healthy place. And so the weekend came and my husband wanted to take me out to dinner. I wasn't going to tell the man no, you know, but I also knew he probably wasn't going to get home until about seven or eight at night. And in order, by the time we left and went out and we had our, and I wanted to have my wine at dinner, I was not going to say no to that. I moved my, my, my fasting period up. I knew I woke up that morning. I'm like, I'm saving the time. I pushed it a couple of hours. I got through with it with one more cup of coffee. This is how I did it. One more cup of coffee, pushed it a little bit more, got the workout in, did all the things. At night, went to dinner, and then the next day, I had to recalibrate and start again at 11, okay? So all I did that day was shift it. Does it mean that all my work went to crap? No, it just means I just shifted the fasting. Maybe it went a little bit of shorter period because I had to recalibrate and adjust the following day. I probably missed some hours of fasting, but all it did was just break that certain day's time of me going into that fat burning you know peak that's it and i just recalibrate and i just kept going right i can tell you that i've taken off already six pounds off the scale i'm not a scale girl i sit there and measure myself all the time but that's something i had to start looking at now to see what i'm doing here but like i said energy is sky high i feel lean and ripped i'm not even lifting like i normally would in my normal healthy body because right now i'm rehabbing and to me, it's like phew, mind blown. And I didn't have to sacrifice, you know, a night out with my husband and whatnot. I just recalibrated, right? And understood that all I'm doing is just messing around with the fasting period, okay? Um, I'm eating the same amount as I did beforehand. A big question I'm getting is, am I getting all the containers in? From day one, when Portion Fix dropped and Autumn went out there and taught us about Portion Fix, she said over and over, guys, Portion fix is not an eating contest. She gives you a, ca a calorie bracket. She gives you a certain amount of containers to eat a day. But every body is different and you should listen to your body. So if you are eating from what you're saying and you're feeling yourself too full, like you can't get the container, like you can't, it's too much food. She says, it's okay. You don't have to eat all the containers. Listen to your body, feed yourself. Obviously it has to be balanced in the containers, right? So you're not going to like, eat all the carbs and eat all the, the, the protein, but eliminate fruits and vegetables. Now you're not eating balanced. Now your macros are not right. But it is saying like, okay, if you missed, you know, a blue for the day or if you, who misses a blue? I know, who misses a blue? But I'm saying, you know what I mean? Like if you eat like one less green and, and you know, half a yellow didn't get in, whatever it is, like you're, you, you shouldn't get, like you're not failing. What you can't do, what you shouldn't do, is eat above what your bracket is, what your target is, what your goal is, right? So it's saying like, yeah, you gotta stay underneath these 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 containers, but don't you know, like don't exceed them. But if you know, also eat to where you're not making yourself feel like you're in an eating contest and you're just like eating to eat and it doesn't feel good. All right. So me personally, like I said, I said in the beginning of the call, I'm falling anywhere between um, A and B. And some days I get the, all the containers in. Sometimes I've got some left over and that's okay. I don't freak out about that. Um, 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 and then tracking and then energy. I think I covered every question that I've been getting behind the scenes on repeat. So with that, um, I'll leave you guys. If there's any questions that you have, I'm gonna stop the recording here. And any questions that anybody has that's watched this video, you know where to find me, ask me, but hopefully this has answered all the frequently asked questions that I've got on intermittent fasting and portion fix.